Okay, so I thought I'd make a little video of um, how to spot the northern lights because I always get asked how to spot the northern lights and what's the best ways and what how do you read forecasts and what direction what do you do with the camera so I thought I'd just make a short little video and show everyone pretty much what I do to capture the northern lights and all the checkpoints you need to make to uh, make sure you see the northern lights and you can capture them through your camera so obviously step one is pretty simple you have to have clear skies you need clear skies to actually see obviously the aurora the aurora doesn't happen when there's cloud cover because the aurora happens miles and miles high up in the in the atmosphere so you need to have a clear view all the way to the edge of pretty much the space so you need clear skies especially in the northern horizon so the best area to look for for the aurora is obviously the northern horizon they're called northern lights for a reason they have to be north uh, they come down from the northern pretty much the arctic so a good way of knowing roughly where to look for north is if you find the plough just look under the plough and that's pretty much north you'll see the aurora there if it's if it's out um, but yeah you just need to look north very low down on the horizon because in Scotland since we're quite a lower latitude than obviously the arctic and where the northern lights really form it has to be really strong activity for it to come down to us so when we're seeing it we're seeing it through like the curvature of the earth almost so when we're seeing it dancing over the arctic and it's really strong we're seeing it low on our horizon if that makes sense you're kind of seeing it through the curvature of the earth and you're seeing it in space but it's dancing above pretty much the north pole not the north pole the arctic circle sort of area so you're kind of going through the curvature of the earth and seeing pretty much the edge of space much further north than us but sometimes on high activity it does come down to our latitude and it can be almost overhead here which is pretty cool kind of rare but it's getting a bit more lightly since we're going into solar maximum i'll come into that as well because that's another factor we have to look at as the sun's activity so yeah look north look below the plough and make sure you have clear skies and you should see them if the northern lights are active so how do we know if the aurora is strong well we have to look at pretty much solar activity which is pretty much just activity on the sun's surface so aurora comes from pretty much solar winds, radiation, sort of that sort of stuff coming from the solar surface so the best way to look at that is if you see sunspots and flares and coronal holes which I'll put images up on the screen just now so you roughly know what it is uh, if you see them on the sun's surface and they're in an earth directed view we're in a good shout to capture some aurora so when it's in an earth directed view it takes about three or four days for that solar winds, radiation, yada yada to hit our atmosphere and what that does is pretty much it smashes into Earth's atmosphere and it gets excited with our chemicals, all the particles and it gets all complicated but pretty much it hits Earth's atmosphere, gets excited and then creates colour which is the aurora so um, just now we're kind of coming at a solar minimum so the solar cycles is pretty much a 11 year cycle that the sun goes through, it's approximate, so solar minimum was forecast by scientists a few years ago so now we're kind of starting to come into solar maximum and, you can, and we can see the, the, the increase of activity as well so every few weeks now we're getting some sort of aurora show so as we go into solar maximum it's going to get more and more popular we're expected solar maximum in a few years so can't wait for that um, but we just have to look out for that the best apps to see all these solar cycles and wind, sun, sun um, flare and stuff. Hold on, because I've got loads of them. So I'll take a, a screenshot, show you these apps that I use. So a great one is uh, my Aurora Forecast, Aurora Forecast, and pretty much they'll show you pictures of the sun, show you when they think activity is going to be likely. A summary of data is called the KP reading. I used to trust it but now I've seen like shows on like KP1 too so I don't really trust it anymore that's just like an overall so you need sort of a KP5 or more to be seen in Scotland but I have seen them in like KP2 so um, I wouldn't really trust the KP system really as long as there's activity on the sun another great app as well is Glendale app it's not actually an app on the app store it's an app you download off the internet it's like a website but you download it onto your homepage, and it's fantastic it'll be yeah, again put pictures on the screen 
and it was it's a, a guy up in Andy Stables up in Isla Sky made it and it is absolutely phenomenal um, if the rower is out you see wee ticks all over the country of people who have captured Aurora and he'll put like, a wee summary at the top of the app saying activity tonight, no activity tonight it's going to get stronger, it's going to get, it's going to decrease etc it's a, it summarises everything it's like an Aurora hunting app for noobs so it is 100% brilliant it also does Noctilucent Clouds as well so if some, someone sees Noctilucent Clouds in the summer it does the same it's like a Noctilucent Clouds sort of symbol over the country and you can see them, but it's brilliant for the uh, Aurora. Always, I always pretty much check that daily. Uh, it's so good. Yeah, apps is always a brilliant mate. There's also Facebook groups as well. Uh, Aurora Scotland, Aurora Research Scotland uh, is by far probably the best group. As soon as someone's seen Aurora, post a picture on that time, location, settings, and all that. Uh, it's a really good. Uh, group. There's loads of groups as well. Aurora Hunters UK, Aurora Watch North East, I think. There's loads of apps on Facebook, so they're always a really good go-to um, for people who are just getting started out. People ask questions and you'll get answers and stuff. So that's always a really good uh, option. So Facebook groups and apps on your phone can pretty much make you see Aurora when you don't think to. And you know, you don't have to be that high skill level, you just have to join it and you'll get notified. Some some of the apps actually give you a notification if you pay like a pound or something, it will like give you a notification on your for on your phone that the Aurora's gonna be visible. So it's it's well worth it. Um it's so it's brilliant. So hopefully we're getting to solar maximum, so um sightings of the northern lights will be more and more active. Um the sun should be waking up well it is, so we're looking forward to the sun waking up even further and hopefully exploding very soon. And pretty much the aurora can be um, any time between September to March, April. As long as it's dark in the night sky, it can happen absolutely any time. But I kid you not, any time. Like when we, I remember seeing it was only a few weeks ago. There was the most insane. It was mainly the west coast got it. The most insane aurora show, um, and there was there was no forecast for it, there was no activity, it just kind of burst off, so no one really knew how, but it just, it just happened. Some, sometimes the roar just bursts when it wants to, so it's literally any time it's dark between September and March. There's myths about when it's really, I've heard uh, someone, I heard, oh, it needs to be really cold to see the roar up. No, it, it doesn't, really. Um, when I was up in Cairn Gorms and I saw it, it was 18 degrees at night, that was like a really warm day, but I saw the northern lights in 18 degrees. It doesn't have to be cold at all, that's just a myth. Um, but yeah, don't listen to it, it needs to be cold. It just has to be clear, clear view north and decent sun activity and you'll see them. So, um, what else? What does the northern lights look like to the naked eye? Uh, pretty much, I'll put some two, two images up of what the camera picks up and what the, your naked eye would see. So pretty much you can see colours and it dancing with the naked eye, 100%. People say, oh, you don't see it, yet yeah, you do. I've seen like purples in Scotland, it's just, you, you do see the colours and you see it dancing through the sky, no problem. I've been in Iceland as well to see them and it's one of the best sights I've ever seen. That's why I'm hooked on Aurora hunting. Um, pretty much the camera picks up the colour. So with the naked eye, it's just like a desaturated picture if that makes sense. It's just the greens aren't as green as it is in the picture but you do still see the green so it's kind of just a, if you take down the saturation of any Northern Lights picture make it almost black and white that's roughly what you see but with a hint of purples and greens when it's really strong so it's still magical to see but it's not as green because obviously a camera's seen it through 20 to 30 seconds of 10 to 20 to 30 seconds worth of exposure, your eyes only seen it at pretty much kind of instant time live view. So um, it's not seeing the full on colour, the, the, uh, but it's just a desaturated picture of what the camera sees, is what you see. So it's just almost black and white, but with a hint of purples and greens when it's really strong. So it's still absolutely phenomenal to see. So never get put off by people saying, oh, it doesn't look like that good in the camera. No, you've just not picked it on a good night because it is phenomenal to the naked eye. Um, I'm currently looking north here, but there's no activity just now because there's cloud coming in.
Right, last sort of couple of tips is how to photograph them. So the best way to photograph them is just tripod, any sort of camera that can control the ISO and exposure. And as long as you're about 10 to 20 seconds, you're good to go pretty much. Um, it's nothing fancy, you just have to be in the right place at the right time. That is that is pretty much the basics of Aurora hunting. Right place, right time, and you'll get a shot. Um, but yeah, ISO 1600, roughly there, ISO 1600 to 3200, um, 10, 15 second exposures because you want to capture the, the detail in the northern light. Okay, so sorry, my battery died there, I had to run back down to the car and get a new battery. Um, so I think what I was saying is, yeah, you need a shorter exposure to get the detail in the northern lights because they move so quick, you need a kind of fast-ish exposure, 10 to 20 seconds, any longer than that, the detail of the northern lights will kind of get diminished and it'll just look like a big blur. So you need a decent amount of exposure, but they're pretty easy. Tripod's essential, tripod camera, 10 to 20 second exposure, 1600 to 3200 ISO, focus on a farmhouse or a street light or a car headlight and look north, pretty much just look to the, the plough and you should get the northern lights if there's activity. So it's, it's pretty easy, ash photography is easy when you know how to, it's just focusing is probably a fo uh, people's main downfall but it's easy when you know how to. Um, but that's pretty much it. So. I'll put wee footages here and there of the Northern Lights. Here's another car coming. I'll wrap this up before the car comes. Um, I'll put pictures of the Northern Lights. I'll put um, all the list of the apps and stuff. Um, and yeah, hopefully you found this useful some some way. Um, if there's anything else, just let me know, comment, or send me a message, and I'll more than likely help you. Uh, I'm going to be doing a workshop soon, so hopefully I can bring you out to see the Northern Lights in person if you've never uh, seen the Northern Lights before. Um, but other than that, thank you very much. Hopefully this helps and hopefully we get a good season of Aurora chasing because the sun is waking up finally and we're finally seeing an improvement of Aurora. So can't wait. Enjoy all the footage and I'll see you next time hopefully under the Northern, northern Lights. So cheers. Oh, before I actually finally go, uh, a big shout out to Aurora.live. Um, I'm, sub I'm a subscri subscriber to them, they are a chain of Aurora webcams, I link them actually into in my website, scotlandsnightsky.com and there's a link to the, these webcams on my page, but they have a prob well, the best um, online sort of system to see the Northern Lights and they've got webcams all over Norway, all over Finland, all over Sweden, Canada, uh, America uh, and Iceland so you can just log on to this website, aurora.live and you can see Northern Lights whenever, so if you're bored and you want to see the Northern Lights are out, you go on aurora.live and you can just sift through all these webcams and they're brilliant like H HD quality um, and I just sometimes just watch the Aurora just live on my phone. If you're out Aurora hunting and it's clear in Shetland, check the Shetland webcams. Yeah again I've got a link to that in my on my website. Um, but you can just type in Shetland webcams pretty much. So if you look at the Shetland webcams and you see them dancing over Shetland, they're pretty much dancing, they'll be dancing over most of Scotland as well. So it's always good to check webcams as well because that can literally show you live in time the Aurora. I've been out thinking, oh, should I go out, should I not? Check the Shetland webcams, you can see the, the green arc just growing, just slowly getting, kind of coming down south pretty much to Scotland. So when I see it in Shetland growing, then I get out because of the time I get out it should grow all the way to the mainland Scotland so webcams as well totally forgot them webcams is pretty much almost essential I always use them so it's good to see what's going on in Iceland and Norway and obviously the Shetland webcams is very very useful at all uh, definitely looking forward to the next few years thank you that's me done now